Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Tuesday, December 6, 2016. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please go to CADEX TV. Authorities in Oakland, California have now indicated that they will likely open a criminal investigation of the fire that is confirmed now to have killed 36 people. There are still as many as six people missing. It's expected that the death toll will uh, climb to over 40. Meanwhile, Lloyds of London announced a series of steps designed to sharpen its operational focus. The steps are going to begin at the uh, start of next year. They're going to include setting up a new syndicate capability oversight team. They're also going to create a new policyholder and third-party oversight function. And they're also going to roll in their regulatory and compliance activities into the new chief risk officers, uh, Hillary, Re Hillary Weaver's risk and regulatory division. Uh, data-led activities will be consolidated in a new data lab. Uh, this is all a result, said CEO Inga Beal, of an uh, intensive review by the consultancy 1-6, uh, which began a, a review of Lloyd's operations earlier this year. Uh, the latest changes, of course, also come while Lloyd's is searching for a new chairman to succeed outgoing uh, Chair John Nelson. It's now confirmed that Liberty Mutual has agreed to acquire Ironshore, just over a year after Fosun's, uh, Fosun International acquired the remaining 80% stake in Ironshore. Uh, the CEO of Ironshore, Kevin Kelly, said the deal represents a win-win for all three parties, uh, Fosun, Ironshore, and Liberty Mutual. We'll recall that AM Best raised rating concerns about Fosun because of the lack of transparency uh, concerning its investments, both within China and outside of China. Uh, Fosun had uh, tried to determine what to do with Ironshore, uh, with suggestions ranging from an IPO to selling it. They have now decided to sell it. Liberty Mutual will acquire 100% ownership of Ironshore via a stock purchase agreement believed to be worth around $3 billion pending closing price adjustments. The Florida Office of Insurance Information is now saying that claims stemming from Hurricane Matthews brushed with the state are now at $729 million. Residential property damage uh, prompted the greatest number of claims, with about 95,000 filed. Um, the increase in commercial property claims uh, went from about 6,000 up to, uh, it went to 6,000 from about 4,900 at the end of October. Matthew closed out the hurricane season in the U.S. It was the most active season since 2012, with seven hurricanes among 15 named storms. Uh, carriers in Florida got lucky, according to a ballot of CEO Ed Noonan. If Matthew had come just 30 miles further inland to the west, insured losses could have easily exceeded $40 billion in Florida. The court in Saudi Arabia has sentenced 15 people to death for spying for Iran. They were among 32 people comprising 30 members of the uh, Kingdom Shia Muslim minority that had been put on trial back in February. Prosecutors accused them of treason, setting up a spy ring in collaboration with Iranian intelligence and passing sensitive data to them on military zones. Saudi Arabia broke off diplomatic relations with Iran in January following the storming of its embassy in Tehran. Britain will have to reach a Brexit deal by October of 2018, according to the EU's chief negotiator for Brexit, Michael Barnier. Barnier told reporters in Brussels that time will be short for negotiations because the proposed deal needs to be ratified as part of the two-year process that will be triggered in March when Theresa May says she will trigger Article 50. Barnier said the UK could not cherry-pick on issues such as the single market. Uh, earlier yesterday, uh, Prime Minister May told the BBC she was aiming for a, quote, red, white, and blue Brexit for the UK, the colors of the British flag. Um, according to Barnier, it's clear that the period for actual negotiations will be shorter than two years because we have to hammer out the discussions that the uh, British bring us with their proposals and then we have to have our own internal approvals and the EU has to approve it and then it has to go back to Britain apparently now for final approval, especially if the High Court rules that the Parliament does have the final say. House Republican leaders signaled yesterday that they would not support President-elect Trump's threat to impose a heavy tax on companies that move jobs overseas. This is the first significant confrontation over the conservative economic orthodoxy that Trump relishes trampling. Kevin McCarthy, the majority leader of the House, says, I don't want to get into some kind of trade war. 
in response to Trump's threats over the weekend to levy a 35% import tariff on goods sold by American companies that move jobs overseas. Paul Ryan, the speaker, also pushed back against Trump yesterday in an interview, saying that I think we can get there through the tax code, uh, which is better than imposing tariffs. Mr. Trump will learn that uh, there are three separate but equal branches of government in Washington. It will be interesting to watch. That's the news for today. I believe if we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.